ICN C sexual violence is a top priority. Not because we just decided that in Geneva, but we see that everywhere where we work. Every armed conflict you see how sexual violence is a major issue for women, for girls, but also sometimes for, for men and boys. Our clear assumption is that any, every armed conflict where we operate, there is sexual violence. So there's no need for us to try to start to prove it that a delegation need to tell us, you know, there is a trend, there is a problem here, let's, let's really do something. No, we decided there is something happening anyway, but it's invisible, it's hidden. We have to train our people, make sure they understand in each of their programs, having the right people, the right skill. It was a request from the ICRC, who has now put sexual violence in conflict as one of their main priorities for the coming years, and had a great sense that there wasn't enough knowledge and there wasn't enough awareness about the issue among their staff and to train mid and senior level managers so that they can influence what happens in their teams. So I thought that this was a very interesting idea. ICRC didn't want to have it in-house but have it with an academic institution to get also other organizations to participate in such a training to have an exchange of experiences. Those individuals most vulnerable to sexual and gender-based violence are able to access different services but also um, different ways of empowering their voice, their knowledge of their rights, but also to exercise these rights. Sexual and gender-based violence is pervasive in unfortunately all societies. So when you couple that with a, an active conflict situation or when you add the dimension of forced displacement, there's so much that needs to be done to be able to properly respond um, in these situations. And so developing strategies is one thing, targeted funding and programs is another, making sure that our partners have a real professionalism um, around the response and the programs and the services that they deliver. Understanding also that there's so many dimensions to sexual and gender-based violence. New trainings need to be put in place. So all of this requires constant vigilance. It needs to be a priority for UNHCR because unfortunately I'm afraid as long as there is displacement, as long as there will be refugees and unfortunately as long as there will be gender inequality in our societies, there will continue to be sexual and gender-based violence. The first thing is to uh, sensitize the population that something can be done. Uh, that medically people can be, ex uh, uh, or victims, uh, can be assisted. Uh, uh, and that it is important that they are assi uh, assisted in order to prevent uh, the transmission, for example, of uh, sexually transmittable diseases, but also uh, to uh, eventually repair a specific trauma. So I think this is the, the main message, that services exist and that victims, survivors, can be assisted actively medically in order to regain uh, at least uh, a certain uh, physical and psychological health. We also need to continue challenging MSF role to expand the medical care for victims of sexual violence, but we need to stay vigilant and maintain independence from political pursuits by national and international governance, however promising they might seem. We need a sea change in current thinking about the scale and impact of sexual violence against men and boys. This form of sexual violence was reported in more than 25 conflicts around the world since 2000. But only 3% of NGOs working on sexual violence say that they do anything to do with male survivors. In our own work with refugees coming into Uganda, where we have been able to do systematic screening the results suggest that one in three male refugees coming out of Eastern DRC has experienced sexual violence in their lifetime. So I can say safely that in, in our work, when we, we look at our figures, one in three of the GBV survivors that we work with is male, and those are people presenting themselves to our offices. So if in a year we deal with 1,500 clients, 500 of them will be male and 1,000 will be female. We need <coughs> additional training within the curriculum of, of all of those practitioners so that they understand the phenomenon of sexual violence against men 
and are trained appropriately. There was so much demand for this course, we couldn't take all the people who wanted to come, so we have already planned the next one in March. There will be probably a French version in June and then another course next autumn. But on the other hand, which is really evident, is that this collaboration, this initial collaboration between people committed to the issue and the organization has really pointed also to some areas which would need more research or more development and where an academic institution could play a role because we are a kind of neutral space where certain things could be discussed and could be developed for the future.